Hi, second graders. My name is Miss Curry, and I'm really excited that I get to work with you on reading this week. We're going to be talking about determining important ideas in opinion articles. Before we get started, if you have your literacy extension packet, or if you have your Making Meaning uh, student response book, you might want to get those now. That way, you can follow along with me while I read the articles that we're going to read today. Once you have them, you're going to want to go to the page that says zoos are good for animals. That's what we'll be working on today. Last week, you guys spent some time practicing giving reasons for your thinking. This week, we're going to have more chances to practice that same skill. I'll be checking in with you throughout the week to see how you're doing on that. Before we get started today, I also want you to make sure that you have a partner to share your ideas with. We like to turn and talk about our ideas so that we can think more deeply about them and make our ideas make sense to others. So please make sure before we get started, you have someone to talk to. That could be a family member. It could be a pet. It could be a favorite stuffy or just a favorite toy. Whoever you choose to be your partner today, make sure they're ready to listen as we get started with our work. Also, as you're sharing today, you may share in any language that you are used to using at home. So our goals for our lesson today are, I can hear and discuss an opinion article. I can explore important ideas in an opinion article. And I can describe how reasons support important ideas. A couple of important things for us to get started um, remembering today is the idea of nonfiction. You guys have already learned that nonfiction is writing that tells us true information about real things. If you can see the poster behind me, you can see the definition for nonfiction. Another thing we'll be starting learning about today is opinion articles. An opinion article is an article or a piece of writing where the author gives their opinion or their point of view on something. They also try to persuade the reader to agree with them, though, which means they want you to agree. Okay, an opinion is something that someone feels really strongly about. For example, a, an opinion I have is that mint chip ice cream is the best flavor of ice cream. You might have a different opinion about ice cream, but that is my opinion. We also have reasons. Reasons are important ideas that support a writer's opinion. So for example, if my opinion is that mint chip ice cream is my favorite flavor or is the best flavor, a reason would be that it has little chocolate chips in it, which I think makes it great. That would be a reason that supports my opinion that mint chocolate chip ice cream is the best flavor of ice cream. As we read today, I want you thinking, what are the important ideas in this text? What is the thing that the author really wants me to remember? So make sure if you have your literacy extension packet or you're making meaning a student response book that you open up to this article, Zoos are good for animals. If you don't have either of those things, that's okay. You can follow along here on the screen. As I read, um, I'm going to actually read this article twice. The first time I read it, I want you guys thinking about what you are learning. We're going to stop and talk about the things we are learning in the article. The second time we read through it, we're going to stop and talk about what we think is important to remember in this article. Remember, when authors write articles, there are things that they want us to remember. Those are the important ideas. All right, so take a look up at the title. The title is Zoos Are Good for Animals. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Just about everyone enjoys a trip to the zoo. But are zoos good for animals? Many people think that they are. When the author says many people think that they are, they're saying that they think that um, lots of people would agree. 
One way that zoos help animals is by caring for them and treating animals that are sick. For example, the Wildlife Health Center at the Bronx Zoo in New York provides care for more than 15,000 animals. The zookeepers at the Bronx Zoo also work with animals to keep their minds and bodies healthy. For example, the zookeepers use toys and games to help tigers develop their natural instincts, such as the instincts needed for hunting. Natural instincts means that uh, ways of behaving, the animals in the wild are born knowing how to do. I'll read that sentence again. For example, the zookeepers use toys and games to help tigers develop their natural instincts, such as the instincts needed for hunting. Let's stop there. What have you learned so far in this article? Turn and talk to your partner. What did you share with your partner? I bet a lot of you said that you learned that zoos can help treat and care for animals. Awesome job sharing. Let's keep going. For example, zookeepers use toys and games to help tigers develop their natural instincts, such as the instincts needed for hunting. Zoos protect animals too. Animals in zoos are safe from hunters. Zoos are also safe places for animals whose habitats are being threatened. Being threatened means they're in danger. Let's read that sentence again. Zoos protect animals too. Zoo, animals in zoos are safe from hunters. Zoos are also safe places for animals whose habitats are being threatened. By protecting animals, zoos help endangered species survive. In the last 30 years, zoos working with other conservation groups have helped save black-footed ferrets, California condors, red wolves, and other endangered species. Let's stop there. What did you learn in the part that I just read? Turn and tell your partner. Awesome job sharing, second graders. Let's keep going. So we just read that in the last 30 years, zoos working with other conservation groups have helped save black-footed ferrets, California condors, red wolves, and other endangered species. Zoos are also places where scientists can study animals. Zoos often share information with other zoos and scientists, which helps everyone learn more about the animals. The more we understand our animal friends, the more we can help protect them. Stop there again. What did you learn in the part that I just read? Turn and tell your partner. Great job sharing. I bet that some of you shared that you just learned that zoos help scientists learn more about animals. And that also helps the rest of us learn more about animals. Great job, let's keep reading. So the more we understand our animal friends, the more we can help protect them. The next time you visit the zoo, say thanks to the zookeepers for making life better for the animals that live there. All right, second graders, awesome job with that first reading of the article. This second time that we read the article, I want you to think about and then we'll discuss the important ideas um, I want you thinking about the different parts of the article and thinking about what the author's opinion is and how they're supporting their opinion with those reasons. All right. So starting again at the top, the title is Zoos Are Good for Animals. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Just about everyone enjoys a trip to the zoo. But are zoos good for animals? Many people think that they are. One way that zoos help animals is by caring for them and treating animals that are sick. For example, the Wildlife Health Center at the Bronx Zoo in New York provides care for more than 15,000 animals. The zookeepers at the Bronx Zoo also work with animals to keep their minds and their bodies healthy. For example, the zookeepers use toys and games to help tigers develop their natural instincts, such as the instincts needed for hunting. Let's pause right there. 
How does the author feel about zoos? Or what is the author's opinion about zoos? What in the article makes you think so? Go ahead and turn and tell your partner what you think. I bet that a lot of you are sharing that the author likes zoos or that you can tell that the author wants us to know that zoos help animals. Those are great ideas. Awesome job sharing with your partner. Let's keep reading. So we just read that, for example, the zookeepers use toys and games to help tigers develop their natural instincts, such as the instincts needed for hunting. Zoos protect animals too. Animals in zoos are safe from hunters. Zoos are also safe places for animals whose habitats are being threatened. By protecting animals, zoos help endangered species survive. In the last 30 years, zoos working with other conservation groups have helped save black-footed ferrets, California condors, red wolves, and other endangered species. Zoos are also places where scientists can study animals. Zoos often share information with other zoos and scientists, which helps everyone learn about the animals. The more we understand our animal friends, the more we can help protect them. Let's stop there for a second. This is gonna be another think pair share. So in this part of the article, what are some of the important reasons that the author gives to support the opinion that zoos are good for animals? That was a really long question, so I'm gonna repeat it one more time. In this part of the article, what are some of the important reasons the author gives to support the opinion that zoos are good for animals? Turn and tell your partner. Awesome job sharing, you guys. I bet that a lot of second graders out there were sharing that one important reason the author thinks zoos are good for animals is that they keep animals safe. You know from reading the article that at zoos, hunters can't hurt them. Other people might have shared that zoos are good because they help save endangered animals. Whatever you shared, awesome job turning and talking to your partner. Let's finish up the article. So the part we just read said, the more we understand our animal friends, the more we can help protect them. The next time you visit the zoo, say thanks to the zookeepers for making life better for the animals that live there. Second graders, if someone asked you what this article was about, what would you tell them? I bet you have some really good ideas. So, as you were sharing with your partner today, how did you do with giving reasons for your thinking today? You can answer that question either by giving thumbs up, thumbs to the side, or maybe thumbs down. Thumbs up would be, I did awesome, I did great. Thumbs to the side, I did okay, or thumbs down, I could do better next time. I bet that a lot of you were working really hard on giving reasons for your thinking today. So let's think about some vocabulary. This is a sentence from the article, Zoos are good for animals. Let's read it. One way that zoos help animals is by caring for them and treating animals that are sick. For example, the Wildlife Health Center at the Bronx Zoo in New York provides care for more than 15,000 animals. Looking at that word treating, the one that's underlined, what do you think treat might mean. You can turn and tell a partner or you can be thinking in your head. What clues helped you figure out the, the meaning of the word treat? What clues in the text helped you figure that out? An answer might be, I think the word treat means to take care of animals. The clues that helped me figure that out is that it says provides care for more than 15,000 animals. Any answer that you gave, awesome job 
practicing sharing and using clues in the text to figure out new vocabulary words. The word treat means to cure or heal someone who is sick or hurt. For example, the veterinarian will treat my pet's hurt paw. You also might be treated by a doctor when you go into the doctor. Think about the last time you visited the doctor and try to finish this sentence. When I visited the doctor, he or she treated me by... Try to finish that sentence and share it with your partner. Our next word is provide. The word provide means to give something that is wanted or needed. For example, the museum will provide special glasses for the IMAX movie. Imagine that you just got a new puppy. What's something you might need to provide for the new puppy? Finish that sentence. I might provide blank for the puppy because... I might say that I might provide a new bed for the puppy because puppies need a soft place to sleep. Second graders, you guys did a great job today. Remember that um, throughout the week, you should be practicing reading fiction and nonfiction books. Use the thinking about my reading chart to monitor your own reading. Make sure you select just write books. Think about what you are reading. What is it mostly about? What are you wondering? What have you learned? Try to read for 20 minutes every day. And don't forget, if you need more things to read, you can go to any of these websites through the Seattle Public Schools website. Just go to the Seattle Public Schools website, select Student Family Portals, click on Academic Tools. Then you can pick from things like Kids Read, Tumble Book, or Pebble Go. If you don't want to use those, you can also check out resources like Scholastic Learn at Home and ReadWorks. Also today, it's really important for you guys to be going either into your um, extension packet and working on this, or just grab any old piece of paper, but practice writing about your reading and determining important ideas in your reading. So for example, if you take a look at what I did, this week I read a book called The World of Plants. Then I used just a regular piece of paper to do a, um, a journal entry about that book. Just like the one on your screen, I wrote the title and the author. I wrote the topic. I wrote down an idea that the author wants me to remember and I explained my thinking with reasons. I'll go ahead and read you what I wrote. I said, today I read The World of Plants by Becky Manfredini. This book is about plants, about how plants live and grow. The author wants me to remember that plants need water and sunlight. A reason that plants, a reason is that plants that don't get enough water or sunlight will die. When you're working on your own, try to complete your own journal entry about a book that you've read, either in your packet or on a regular piece of paper. Second graders, you did an awesome job today with this lesson. I'm looking forward to working with you for the rest of the week.